Hello once again to Tab Nation. Today we're going to be talking about OCR program and auto hotkeys using a OCR program that you can download for free online. I will link that description in the description below. And OCR, in case you don't know, is optical character recognition. And it's very helpful when you have a picture that has text in it or somewhere you just in general can't highlight something but you still want to capture that text it's going to read that file for you find it put it in the clipboard and then display it into auto hockey to use it for whatever we need so the first thing you need to do is you need to go to this website i know there's a bunch out there this is just the one i have the experience with uh, if there's other really good ones out there that you like a lot better than this, definitely let me know in the comments below. So this one's called Capture to Text. It's uh, just a download here at SourceForge. You're going to get a zip file here. You're just going to go ahead and extract the files. You'll get a folder just like this. As of the filming here, I'm using version 3.9. I'm pretty sure there's some new versions out, but I haven't had really a need to upgrade. I'm happy with just this version. So not sure if the new versions have anything really much more fancier. Uh, also, if you are not trying to do English words, this supports over like 90 plus languages. So it's very diverse, uh, which is great. So you can use this program just off the bat, but if we want an easy way to put it into auto hotkeys, here's how we're going to do it. So let's take a look at the code and make sure you push that subscribe button because I am doing about two to three videos every week having to do with pretty much anything you can imagine with automation. So with the code here, what we got going on, I'm going to press F1 like I always do. And we got a bunch going on here. I'm not really going to go too much into detail on this stuff. Uh, just because I've done a lot of other videos explaining stuff like the GUIs that are in here and whatnot and DLL calls. But the first thing we are going to really want to do here is uh, it's going to get selection coordinates. That's what you'll see here in a little bit when I push F1. As it's going to gray out my screen a little bit so you know it's activated. And then I'm going to use my mouse to highlight the area to get the coordinates of where I want to take that screenshot, basically. Run wait. We're going to run that program that I just told you about, the captured to text. This is where you might need to edit some stuff in the code. This is the location of where I have it. Uh, I just have it there on my desktop. Obviously, if you put it somewhere else, like your documents, you're going to need to change this. And then also just make sure that your version number here is going to match. So I'm running 3.19, but if you're running 4.1, you're going to need to change that too. It's going to uh, get a little lag there. So that program is going to run with the information it got. Now down here, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, the GUI is basically what's turning my screen uh, slightly kind of like gray, like almost like a tint over it. And it's capturing the data of where I'm highlighting. There's a lot going on here. A lot of this I have explained in my GUI uh, videos, so definitely check those out if you do want to manipulate this a little bit more. We also got a few other things going on. Uh, let's see what we got. Key weight is just waiting for me to basically put my mouse down, grab the coordinates, waits for uh, me to get rid of the coordinates, get the next co uh, coordinates to basically create that square. We're going to do some DLL calls here, uh, taking all that like kind of information of where it wants to capture. Once again, did another video on that. Check that out. And then down here, we got a whole bunch of kind of ifs going on. Um, oh, it's also destroying that GUI to get rid of that tint. So a lot of like uh, just kind of things going on here with calculating the coordinates to send to the capture to tech text program. And the last thing it's going to do, which I know it's not at the bottom of the script, it's up at the top. It's just kind of how the order of stuff goes in here because it's jumping down and then jumping back up. It's then going to display the message box with the clipboard information, which is where the capture to text is putting the response back. Obviously, then you can change this section of code to put the clipboard information into a variable and then do whatever you need with that variable. 
So let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, where did I put that code? There it is. So let's go ahead and run that. And so a great example here, I believe. Yep. SourceForge. So as you see, I can't highlight it. It's just trying to create a link uh, shortcut there. So I want to capture that text. I'm going to push F1. And you can see my screen tinted just slightly a little bit there, basically because they're, my entire screen is covered with a slightly transparent GUI. I'm going to click in the corner here. You get a little black highlighting thing there. And that's what I want. I'm going to let go. Took a few seconds there. That was actually pretty quick. The more text and bigger the uh, shot you're taking, the obviously the longer it is going to take to grab the information. So as we see here, what it happened, uh, I got that little carrot sign there. That's actually because I kind of accidentally caught a little bit of this logo here, which, hey, it is actually a carrot. So that's pretty interesting that I got that. And then I got the whole thing there, Source Forge. Even got that space there. Uh, sometimes it will accidentally add a space or possibly get a character wrong. Um, if it's something you see happening a lot and something specific you're doing, you can always use like a string replace to say, hey, remove all spaces or anytime there's a double space, turn it into a single space. You know, you can play around to make this a little bit more accurate depending on what you are doing because font can also, that that's a pretty straightforward font. But if you're playing like a video game trying to capture that or from a picture and the font's kind of more like a cartoony thing, it does actually a pretty decent job at messing around with fonts and uh, getting the correct answer, but it's not always going to be perfect. So you might have to do some string replaces just to kind of make it a little bit more accurate. So yeah, that's about all I had for this. A quick demo on that and how to get that information from that program. If you have any questions uh, about this, definitely hit me up in the comments below. Hopefully I can explain into a little bit more detail. And definitely let me know what you guys would be using this for. I'm always curious to see. I've only really ever used this in a video game to collect some sort of data that I want to keep records of. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.